Welcome to my channel. I'm Gary Wuryawan. And today I want to discuss about micro four thirds versus flagship smartphone camera. Let's go. Before we continue with today's video, if you are new to my channel, welcome. I mainly talk about photography and music from the perspective of an enthusiast. I'm not a professional. So if you're into something that's more honest, more authentic, you want some real opinion from an enthusiast, then you might want to subscribe to my channel. Also, you might want to support my channel by using the affiliate links down below. It will really help me to grow this channel even further. Thank you. And now let's continue with today's video. So recently, my wife just bought a new phone, the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. It is already one year old and in terms of smartphone, it's not that new, but it is still a flagship smartphone and the different specification compared to the S23 Ultra that is newer is not really that much. So I think this is the perfect opportunity for me to compare a flagship smartphone camera with an actual Micro Four Thirds camera, how they perform, how they are different, and which one is better for what purpose. However, please keep in mind that both of these tools are very different. They are for different purpose. One is a communication tool and one is a dedicated photography tool. So they are not really apple to apple and this is not a scientific comparison. However, I will try my best to explore different viewpoints, different perspectives so you will understand better which one is better for what purpose as I mentioned earlier. So now let's start with our first comparison which is image quality. So how does the image quality compare between a micro four thirds camera and a smartphone camera? And the answer is not really that simple. Many people will try to jump into conclusion that micro four thirds will definitely have image quality and they are not wrong. However, there are some good things that are happening with smartphone camera right now. So with the S22 Ultra, you'll have four different cameras and lens setup. First is the main normal wide angle camera. And then the second one is the ultra wide angle. And then the third one is a 3x zoom. And the fourth one is a 10 times zoom. So four different kinds of focal lengths. It's quite a very versatile setup that you have with the S22 Ultra. Now, I'm not really impressed with the 10 times zooms camera on the S22 Ultra. However, the 3x zoom, the normal wide and the ultra wide angle are quite impressive. The images taken using this camera setup on the S22 Ultra looks really nice, really sharp, really detailed. And uh, for what they are, I'm quite impressed. Uh, some of the things that I noticed, especially with Samsung smartphones, they have that little bit of HDR look, which is really nice for uh, sceneries, for landscape photography, but for portrait, it's a little bit overboard because the colors are too crazy. In my opinion, it's a little bit too saturated. However, it's just personal opinion and just matter of taste. Some people like this kind of colors and I think that is fine. And I don't really explore the raw capabilities of the S22 Ultra because in my own vision, smartphone is all about that instant quick picture. It's not really about, you know, uh, dialing down settings and whatnot and trying to come up with the uh, a look that you like. It's just press and get that picture. It's very different kind of feeling compared to an actual Micro Four Thirds camera. So yeah, in short, the images taken using the S22 Ultra are really nice. They are not that far behind from an actual Micro Four Thirds camera. However, there are some things that Micro Four Thirds is still better in terms of image quality when you compare it to an S22 Ultra or whatever flagship smartphone that you want to compare. First, the level of detail, the level of sharpness, the level of just the overall image quality in Micro Four Thirds is just a level ahead of even a flagship smartphone. It's just no denying this is still better, even though this is an older camera. The one that I hold right here is a Panasonic GX85 from 2016, and the S22 Ultra is from 2022. So yeah, there's about six years difference, and I think Micro Four Thirds is still better in terms of image quality. Also with Micro Four Thirds, you can just change the lens to get different kinds of focal lengths and you'll be able to zoom in and zoom out using different lenses and you'll get that same flexibility as the one that you get from the multiple camera setup on the S22 Ultra. 
And with micro four thirds, it's even better because the lenses, they are mostly sharp and detailed. You can check out my video about micro four thirds lenses right here. And yeah, in short, with the ability to change lens, uh, micro four thirds is more flexible in terms of image quality. And with the quality of the lenses that we get, we'll be able to get much detailed picture compared to S22 Ultra or whatever flagship smartphone. Another image quality benefit using micro four thirds camera is that you're able to shoot in raw format, which I do 100% of the time. With raw format, you'll be able to preserve more dynamic range and all the color details. And that means when you post process your image, you can get your own personalized kind of look. You want more contrast, you get that. You want more dynamic range HDR look, you got that. You want more colors, less colors, you'll be able to do that in post processing. With smartphone picture, it's not really that easy because when you shoot with smartphone, you'll get that look that's already been dictated to you that, uh, you know, kind of manufactured specific kind of look. And if you don't like that, then you're kind of screwed. You cannot really change the colors. You cannot really change the contrast. It's already baked into the picture and you have to edit it yourself. And that really defeats the purpose of using smartphone camera, which is to get an instant, quick, beautiful pictures. Anyway, I made a video a few months ago about shooting raw pictures using micro four thirds camera and how to edit those raw pictures in Lightroom. You can check it out up here. Maybe you're interested in that video. So yeah, in terms of image quality, I think Micro Fortis is still the winner right here. However, the S22 Ultra or whatever flagship smartphone that you are using is not really that far behind and I'm quite impressed with how the technology progress. Next, let's compare portability between Micro Fortis camera and smartphone. And as you can see right away, <laughs> look at here, wow. Smartphone is definitely much smaller, much slimmer, and it is pocketable. Your micro photo camera is not pocketable even though you are using the slimmest pancake lens that is available. It's just not possible. However, I'm just going to say that micro photos is still smaller compared to other camera formats such as full frame or APS-C. And that is the main reason why I chose micro four thirds as my main camera system. You can check out uh, some of my travel videos. I made some vlogs right here that you can watch that features micro four thirds and how it is very beneficial for travel photography because it, because it is small and lightweight. However, smartphone is just much smaller and much slimmer. So if portability is something that is very, very important to you, then smartphone is the way to go. Next, I want to talk about enjoyment factor and how it compares between micro four thirds camera and smartphone. Many people, when they compare an actual camera with a smartphone, they will always talk about image quality or portability, but not a lot of people talk about the enjoyment factor. And I think enjoyment factor is one of the most important thing that you have to discuss when you compare between these two things besides image quality. But first, what is the enjoyment factor? It's quite simple. It's enjoying the process of doing photography. How are you having fun with your camera or your smartphone when you are taking a picture? That's what I call the enjoyment factor. The ability to change the settings in your camera, the ability to come up with a composition on your camera, the ability to uh, just press the buttons and dials, the tactility of your camera, the ergonomics of your camera, they are all adding up into the enjoyment factor, which really adds into the having fun factor of doing photography. And with micro photos camera, it is present. It is definitely present, that enjoyment factor. You can feel it. You are having fun when you are taking picture with a dedicated camera. You can do all sorts of things. You can feel the process of photography on your hand. And with smartphone, it's not that you cannot really feel the enjoyment factor. You can still feel it. You can still change settings. You have a little bit of tactility, but it's just not on the same level as on the micro four thirds camera, in my own opinion. So again, with micro four thirds, it's not just about the end result. Yes, the end result is important. You want to have a beautiful picture. However, it's not just about the picture, but also the process of coming up with the picture, how you struggle, quote unquote. How do you uh, perform your rituals before you end up with a beautiful picture? 
is also important in my opinion. With smartphone, it's a little bit taken out from you. So you'll just have the picture, but you don't really have to care about the process. You don't have that struggle. And in my opinion, that takes away a little bit of the fun of doing photography when you are using smartphone. So yeah, if you care about the process of photography, you wanna enjoy yourself, have a little bit of fun doing photography, Micro Four Thirds is the answer. If you want something that is just quick, instantaneous, and just beautiful, you don't really care about the process, you just want consistency and beautiful picture without any effort, smartphone is the answer. But for the enjoyment factor on this round, I will give it definitely to Micro Four Thirds camera. So after discussing and comparing between Micro Four Thirds and smartphone camera, I think we can sum it up in two points. If you want the ultimate image quality, you want some flexibility of being able to change lenses while retaining some details. If you want to enjoy the process of photography and you don't mind your camera to be a little bit larger, not pocketable, but still small and still lightweight, then go with Micro Four Thirds camera. However, if you don't care about the process of photography, you just want something quick, something instantaneous that will give you good pictures and you don't really care about the process of photography and you care about portability, you want the smallest package possible, then go with a flagship smartphone camera. And that wraps up today's video. So that is all for today's video. I hope that the comparison between the Micro Four Thirds camera and a flagship smartphone is helpful, is useful, informative, and entertaining for you. So I wanna know what is your favorite camera? Is it a flagship smartphone or is it a dedicated camera and why? Please comment down below and let's have some discussion. If you have any question about today's video, also comment down below and I will try my best to answer them. Also, don't forget to support my channel. I have some affiliate links down below. You might want to use them and it will greatly help me to grow this channel even further and give you better content in the future. Also, don't forget to like this video, share this video and subscribe to my channel down below. Thank you and see you on the next video. Goodbye.